Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ru Sanasi, and today I am reviewing Wu Long Fallen Dynasty Complete Edition on the Series X, developed by Team Ninja and published by Carry Tecmo. So what is Wu Long Fallen Dynasty? Wu Long Fallen Dynasty The Complete Edition is a new dark fantasy Three Kingdoms action RPG from Team Ninja, the developers of Neo. The premise is you take on the role of a nameless militia soldier fighting for survival in a dark fantasy version of later Han Dynasty where demons plague the Three Kingdoms. You fight off deadly creatures and enemy soldiers using swordplay based on the Chinese martial arts, attempting to overcome the odds by awakening the true power from within. The game boasts various playstyles with weapons and wizardry spells, three player co-op with real or NPCs, varied environments, engaging story and a boost morale system. The complete edition also includes new end game content and all three DLCs, and a collection of collaborative DLC content featuring equipment and stages from collaborations from Neo 2, Naraka Blade Point, and Lies of P. First up is accessibility. With regards to accessibility, there is no difficulty option, but instead opts for options like automatic dash, enemy targeting, etc. Button remapping isn't available, but it does have quite a few controller layout options. Subtitle size adjustments are available, and also options to allow for confirmation regarding purchasing, selling, and upgrading equipment. Visual options for the map are available, but sound options are limited, so should you have any sound issues, this game would not be for you. Next is gameplay. You may be forgiven thinking, wait, wasn't this game out last year? And it was. Like others, I found myself absolutely engaged with it when it was first released, and being that it was on Game Pass at launch, I and a fellow gamer spent a numerous amount of time trying to complete it. Now, in this review, I won't spend too much time treading over the intricacies of the game, as I'm assuming most out there will already be familiar with what Wulong is about. But, if you are new to it, I shall be giving you the basics, but with more emphasis on what's been improved and added since launch. This hopefully will give you the best indication of the complete edition, if you don't own it already, is it's right for you. For those familiar with Team Ninja's own unique version of Dark Souls meets Feudal Japan creation of Nier, you'll be well versed in how punishing it can be. Wulong is no different regardless of its new setting and rewards those that perfect the art of battle than just wildly swinging at your enemy hoping to power through. Many gamers were frustrated with the game's first boss, a commander named Zhang Lang whose sole purpose is to teach you perfect parrying infused with magical spells and well-timed dodges. However, for those that managed this, soon realised that these were mere trifle when compared to the game's fourth boss, Lu Bu, whose punishing close quarters and equally punishing long distance attacks had players almost rage quitting. And this is mostly down to the unique parrying mechanics unlike other games. Here, you need to hold down the parry button at the right moment, not tap it. If you want to know what Wulong's gameplay is all about, it's all about perfecting your patience and that parrying. You start off within the game's pretty robust character creation area that allows for a vast number of tweaks and customizations of the game's avatar. From there, you are then thrown straight into the game's first level, which teaches you the basic combat techniques, alongside the game's boost morale system. This determines the damage a player receives from enemies, and you start each mission with a moral rank of zero. The rank then is gradually increased by defeating enemies and using the various attack options at your disposal alongside raising flags, which also boost it. What makes it unique is that enemies each have their own moral rank, which is a great visual reference to help you easily work out what enemy threats are manageable at your current rank. 
Your morale will continue to rise the more enemies you defeat. However, should you die, your morale will revert back to your current fortitude rank. Now, fortitude ranks are based on battle flags being raised, and they also serve as a place to rest up, refill your dragon cure pots, Estus flags to you and me, upgrade yourself, and weapons and call in reinforcements, either with NPCs or online players, with up to three players at any one time. For NPC reinforcements, they can provide the player with an extra stat buff when selected, and the more you play with them, the higher the level up and better they fight. Missions are a collection of main and sub battlegrounds, with you needing to complete a main mission first before the game opens up with alternative choices. These side missions often flesh out the characters within them and do a good job of providing you with extra loot. You can travel to these from any battle flag you raise or at your home hub. As you progress, you will unlock a small village which will become your home hub. Here, you will find all your previous NPC encounters who will give you more tasks and your very own blacksmith. The blacksmith will be your main focal point to upgrade and equipment by allowing embedding new attributes into items. Alongside salvaging items, selling them or even buying new extra items and allowing you to decorate your item so it mimics another item whilst retaining its attributes. There is a plethora of weapons available, each with their own unique attacks and attributes. The extra DLC not only expand this further, but also have collaborations with other games to ensure even more variety. Besides the standard basic attacks and deflecting, which is essential to your gameplay, you will also have spear attacks, martial arts, fatal strikes, and wizardry spells. Deflecting is paramount, and deflecting boss critical attacks, shown by a flashing red icon, will allow you to counter with some serious damage. Now, attacking and deflecting help builds up your spirit gauge, which with enough of that will allow you to launch a spirit attack, a wizardry spell, or a weapons martial art skill. Spirit attacks are buffed attacks that do more damage and reduce the enemy's spirit gauge, and allowing them to be stunned ready for a one-hit fatal kill strike. Martial arts are special weapon abilities each one of them has that can do massive damage. Wizardry spells are based around the five elements which as you progress you can level up and can provide some impressive visual attacks such as lightning strikes to poison clouds. This isn't just attacks though as there is some equally impressive defense skills like a bog that gives health regeneration per second within. Combining these will keep anyone busy in creating some truly damaging builds. The DLC provides another 35 unique spells to gain, but unlike the main game, here you'll need to farm these against foes and beasts for a tomb drop allowing you then to utilise it. Also to accommodate the new wizardry spells, instead of 4 being available when playing, this has been increased to 8. Finally is Divine Beasts, and these come from defeating a boss and taking it for your own to use. These are battle tide turners and charge up as you attack, defend and kill. There are two ways to unleash a Divine Beast, using their one-off special attack for an instant damage on your target, or use their strength to obtain various boosts for your character for a limited period. All Divine Beasts provide three different passives as soon as they are acquired, but can be upgraded to four by completing a certain mission unique to each Divine Beast. The DLC again provides another three Divine Beasts for the players to attain. Besides these extra elements, there is also a new system added that allows powerful effects to be activated during battle, when certain requirements to use it are met. End game content called The Thousand Mile Journey has also been added, which allows players to advance further than levels 101 to 1000. 
players choose a route for the battlefield they wish to challenge and head out on a long journey and gain rewards that can only be attained in this mode. Next up is graphics. When I first played the game it was already showing some amazing visuals and particle effects. However, since going back to it I can say the game's visuals have even been further upgraded. From denser environmental modelling to improved visual lighting, I was surprised how things have changed for the better. Areas truly look visually stunning and whilst the particle effects can be a bit too much sometimes, I was always pleased how the game's style shone. Playing on quality mode, I saw no tearing or slowdown in single player, but did see the odd enemy glitch when I was playing co-op. Wu Long already had a huge variety of enemies, each with their own unique fighting style and patterns to engage with. They range from soldiers, zombies, flying corrupt birds, mythological water creatures to large animals like cats and gorillas. Each area will support a new type of enemy alongside with updated or tougher versions of older enemies for you to be wary of. The DLC only then further increases this with even more corrupted monstrosities that now include plant-based life and creatures. However, it's the game's boss battles which come in all shapes and sizes and visual uniqueness that will captivate you the most. Each has a distinct learning curve with their patterns that you'll need to hone down before you can obtain victory. Battle flags are normally placed near boss battles, allowing you to tackle the fight continuously without starting the level again. Whilst challenging, there are a variety of ways in which you can obtain help. As mentioned previously, you can recruit online strangers, team up with a friend, or call an NPC reinforcement. Whilst recruiting friends is no issue for the main game, please note that it doesn't work for DLC and will require both parties to have purchased the extra content in a bid to join. Weapon designs are equally varied from pole arms, swords, hammers, crossbows, sabers, glaives and again the DLC only increases on this further. Being able to decorate weapons and gear to visually suit your favourite weapon is a superb touch and allows for even more flexibility for the gamer. The level missions are huge sprawling mazes like areas which loop about and can be skipped over entirely depending on the shortcuts you uncover. Despite being large, these multi-tiered level designs provide a good indication of where to go next, but also ensure things are hidden if you don't fully explore. Most players will find themselves going off the main path to try and track down hidden treasures, difficult optional encounters and elevated attack points for those more difficult of enemies. The DLC levels expand not only on the variety of environments, but how you engage with them. A good example of this is the boat level at the start of the second DLC, where fire's arrows constantly rain down upon you as you dart away across damaged boats to the shoreline. Lastly is sound. The music has been designed to ensure the Chinese aesthetics take sole precedent with soft flute and choir-like tones engaging you as you make your way through the game. These only then ramp up at full blow orchestral songs when boss battles take place, but still manage to elevate your senses as you take on that difficult foe. Sound effects is what really sells the game though, from its variety of weapons to wizardry spells and divine beasts, all shining in the weightiness and reverence. 
voice work is also equally impressive for the English version as it doesn't sound dubbed and presents itself as if the game was designed solely with the English speaking gamers in mind. My recommendation here is a good quality headset to listen to the strokes of your weapon going through the hearts of your enemies. And this leads me on to the rating of the game. Now I rate games in order of avoid, on sale, great purchase and must own. My rating for Wulong Fallen Dynasty, the complete edition is a great purchase. Going back to the game after I completed it prior to the DLC releases, I was shocked how improved this game is, both visually and quality of life improvements. The fun factor jumped back on me from my previous engagement, and sitting down with a friend again, both of us appreciated the work that had gone into this since its launch. The game is currently priced on Xbox at £54.99, or approximately $60 and depending on your skill and patience would give you over 50 plus hours worth of gameplay. Combining this with the extra DLC, weapons, in-game modes and increased level cap, you can easily push this to over 100 plus hours. The base game is also on Xbox Game Pass should you wish to try this for free, and I would recommend you do. If you have never played Wu Long and want to experience a different type of Souls like, this would be for you. The complete edition is not only good value for money with the extra content, but actually a good indication of the season path being a worldwide investment if you already own the base game. Well ladies and gentlemen, that's it. I do hope you like this review, and if you do, please like, share, and subscribe if you so wish. And if you would like to put some notes or even just a comment in the comment section, I do like reading them. Anyway, have a great time gaming, and I'll see you all again soon.